Hey everybody, welcome back to See That Guy Review Movies. My name's Christian, and today I'll be going over Onward. Pixar has been one of the more reliable studios to produce quality movies almost every single time for the last couple of decades, and everyone can have their opinion on which movie they like the best or which one they didn't care for, but the only real financial blemish they had was a good dinosaur making the least money out of all the movies, and the only critical blemish they have is Cars 2. And they have been quite on the run lately with their franchises, because out of the last 10 movies they had, 6 of them have been prequels slash sequels, with 2 more movies being added to the car franchise, a monsters prequel, and a sequel for Finding Nemo, The Incredibles, and Toy Story, which all really brought in the money for Disney. The other 4 are original stories, with Brave, Inside Out, The Good Dinosaur, and Coco, which have had varying degrees of success. And for now, I believe that Pixar is stopping with the sequels, and going back to its roots in original storytelling uh, and Soul, which is coming out later this year is proof of that, and probably so they can build more franchises. So what does Onward bring to the table? Well, let's find out. I like the premise from the trailers about how it's talking about a world that was once filled with magic and wonder, and then it has adapted to technology and modern times, which inadvertently leaves the magic behind. And honestly, it's a good metaphor for our childhood and how we naturally grow out of it. Taking two characters on a journey for something is a classic storyline that's been used for ages and Disney definitely had a hand in casting from in-house with MCU stars Tom Holland and Chris Pratt as the two elf brothers Ian and Barley who live in the city of New Mushroomton. Ian is a teenage boy who seems really unconfident and because he was born shortly after his father passed away just always wanted to know what he was like. And Barley is his older brother who is really into the city's magical past, role-playing games, and seeking adventure. They had the two-person dynamic of Ian as the straight man and Barley as the funny guy, and they have their both serious and funny moments. There's also three distinct supporting characters. We have Joy Louis-Dreyfus as Laurel, who plays their mom, Octavia Spencer, who plays Cory the Manticore, and Mel Rodriguez, who is Colt Bronco, the centaur police, and Laurel's boyfriend. Colt has some fun moments, but Laurel and Corey get more of the screen time and more of the funny banter as they're looking for Ian and Barley, and I think Octavia Spencer as Corey the Manticore might have been the funniest performance of the whole movie, but I thought they did a serviceable job. And I guess Walden, their father, is also an unintentionally funny character as he's there, but he's not all there. The story goes like this. On Ian's 16th birthday, his mom gives him and Barley a gift of a late father, which is a magical staff with a phoenix gem and a letter that has a visitation spell that can bring back their father for 24 hours. Despite not seemingly being gifted with magic, Ian somehow summons the lower half of his father before the phoenix gem is destroyed. Barley suggests that they go on a quest to find another phoenix gem so they can finish the spell before time runs out. There are a few things I like from the story. I thought the Manticore's tavern scene was pretty good since it subverted expectations with oh, we're going to go on a quest, but then when they go in there, it's like, oh, we see that this place also adapted to modern times, and it's pretty funny. Also, Ian has a couple of lists written during the movie, and we really see how his character grows as each item on the list gets crossed off. And we also get the fun in bits and pieces as they get into a couple run-ins with the pixie bike gang, the bridge scene, and the pawn shop scene. And honestly, I thought the journey was pretty good. But despite having a good cast, a pretty good story, and a good amount of setup, I didn't really feel fulfilled. It's like the magic was technically there, but the Pixar magic wasn't there. I mean, I didn't really have any expectations for this movie, but I think I was just so used to having Pixar deliver movies that I can connect with on an emotional level. And there were two scenes that had some drama in it, and it's where the brothers are arguing, as all family does at some point. And whatever issues they had, it was quickly resolved with a line or a sequence. And I was like, oh, that was it. And so because it was so quick and fleeting, I didn't really get to feel the depth of their relationship. And it's kind of disappointing because the brother dynamic should work for me since I have two younger brothers and I know what it's like whether to argue with them or to have fun with them. And as we finally get to the third act, I was a bit mixed on it because it was the most animated part of the movie. And there were some cool elements with the magic that's shown throughout the movie, all culminating into this final scene. But I felt a bit underwhelmed, and maybe it's because the dragon didn't look threatening. 
it's alluded to throughout the movie, but when I saw it, I'm just like, oh, okay, it's kind of played for laughs, so it wasn't much of a threat, but hey, maybe that's just me. I did appreciate the growth of Ian's character in confidence and spellcasting through Barley's guidance, the funny side characters, the elements of the quest, and the world building. But despite all the setup being there, it just didn't stick the landing emotionally. So for that, I'm going to have to give this movie a 6.5 out of 10. I know there's people out there who probably like this movie better than I did, but to me, this isn't one of Pixar's finest. Just as a side note, when I watched this movie, I was shocked to find that there was only 17 people in my theater, which I thought was really low for a Pixar movie. And so I wasn't really sure if because the trailers weren't doing any favors, they weren't buzzing at all. I wasn't sure if people were interested in the story or the animation, or maybe it's because people are afraid to go out because of the coronavirus at the moment. But despite how I feel, I think everyone should still give this movie a shot, because who knows, maybe you'll feel the magic. Alright, so there's my review of Onward. What do you think? Do you agree or disagree? Let me know in the comments section down below, and go ahead and give this video a thumbs up or a thumbs down, I really don't care. But if you want to see more movie reviews from this guy, go ahead and click right up here to subscribe, or click up here to watch one of my previous reviews. Other than that, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!